Electricity generation is responsible for 31% of the USA's total carbon emissions each year. So with such urgency to lower emissions, why haven't we seen the mass adoption of renewables you might expect? In a word, infrastructure, as almost all of it was built with fossil fuels in mind. Since 1950, three times more power has been generated by fossil fuels in the USA than all other sources combined. So to talk about energy, we've got to talk about the grid. The first large-scale power plants were hydroelectric dams, which were matched by small-scale coal-fired generators that were used by factories. But hydro could not keep up with increasing demand for electricity, and so a transformation occurred. Cheap and plentiful coal was more efficiently operated through one large centralized power plant rather than many small ones. So coal plants were scaled up in size, and due to the toxic health impacts of burning coal, pushed outside city limits. The ability to generate large amounts of energy and transport it where it was needed fueled the construction of where we live today. Policies were put in place to build up and expand these centralized systems, and lengthy high-capacity power lines were installed to fuel growing downtowns. The result is the infrastructure legacy we have today, resulting in 94% of all power in the USA being generated through this centralized system. This is known as a hard path grid system. The cost of renewables is falling rapidly. In some places, wind and solar projects are already more cost effective than fossil fuels. In addition to massively reducing carbon emissions, these sources have the capacity for reintegrating power generation into city life, creating a decentralized, space efficient, and more robust system less susceptible to massive blackouts. Such a model is called a soft path grid system. Switching from hard to soft path will require us to change how we think about our energy grid. The rise of renewables allows us to think differently, not just about how we generate our electricity, but how we organize its distribution. In the same way that past infrastructure decisions have impacted where we are now, how we move forward today will dictate what options are available for future generations. We thus need to look very carefully at the pros and cons of each of these paths.